Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do a summary. Actually, I shouldn't really feel that jovial. I'm going to do a summary of what I've done for the past five hours after my past four hours after my work ended today after my CPA office. I basically tried to get <coughs> package source to work <coughs> with um, Slackware and uh, just go over I guess, I don't know, there's so many subjects to cover here, but um, I guess I'll start with um, just kind of, I don't know, I'm just a little saddened by um, the basic situation that, um, or circumstance that I see that open source is in, or free software, or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm not really thinking about all that right now. Um, where do I start? Okay, so I the camera I'm using right now. I can't see. I'm not gonna be able to see. It's not gonna be able to record itself. So, um, the camera I'm using right now. Uh, I spent maybe a good while to get it to work initially in uh, Ubuntu Linux. At the end of the whole exercise, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out, and this, this will just be symptomatic, okay? Uh, try to figure out how to get VLC, which is a very good multi, uh, very good DVD player uh, for Linux, how to get it to, um, to, to record more than just the video picture of me, to, to record the sound of me while I uh, recorded videos. I finally did, and I got that off a blog. I didn't get that from the official... Um, I'm not... Granted, let's, let's back up for a second now. Everything I'm going to say is not necessarily a blame. Because I understand on a, on a deeper level that these things happen because of the mistakes we make. As a, a, as a whole, when making uh, Linux, so <clears throat> and the mistakes aren't, aren't 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 apparent when you make them because there there are a lot of different people doing different things and collaborating, but sometimes the collaboration doesn't always fall into place from one place to the other. So, um, so okay, so I went in. But, okay, stop. Um, but I could see where people would be angry. People going around saying that Linux is ready for the desktop or acting like that or that it's just the best thing <laughs> since sliced bread or, you know, for the desktop. It's not. I have to you know, be, be honest, I have to say that. Um, I don't like saying that. I didn't, I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to be here after doing this for maybe ten years now. Um, trying to get this to work. But that's where we're at. I'm not ungrateful. I am sanguine, and uh, I can only hope to get the right message out. Right now, I'm in Windows making this. I tried uh, I don't know I haven't count the I haven't counted the hours but you know it's, it's it's certainly less than 10 and it's probably more than two that I've tried to record decent videos in, in Linux and uh, getting back to my story so I got I got the driver to load and I, I got a test and I got the first program I thought I should use this program called Cheese, and it when you run Cheese in in Linux, it'll give you a very nice picture to it. But um, there's no sound. What? Well, <laughs> why not? So I tried VLC, same thing, but the picture was just pretty bad. 
Beale, that surprised me because VLC has always done just beautifully on playing um, DVDs or MP4s or you know whatever. A little surprise. I'm sure there's a way to configure it, but it shouldn't be that way. That I have to read a manual. You know, I've already invested all this. You know, people when they get to this point, they think of this camera where they've already done a lot of stuff. Because it's not exactly straightforward to get it to work. I mean, it is. It is if you're in a bunch of ten four. But the problem is that's if you're in a bunch of ten four. But you know, if you're in something else, or if you're an older version of the kernel, or if you had experience doing it before, you had to do all these other things to get here. Yeah, you can just now you can just plug it in and it'll load the driver, and then you just gotta install the app to get it to work. But the, the, the see the chaos behind that you you don't know. Well, you still might take those steps to 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 see whether is the device detected, is the driver in there, is um. You know, okay, so anyway, I, I got to work, and that took me longer than it should have because I wasn't aware that it was just going to plug in and work. And um, then I couldn't get audio. Finally, I found some blog, and I, I saw some evidence in, in Audacity that that uh, it was detecting this microphone, and I was even able to record a message, but I couldn't get it, you know, but it was calling it HW1,0. But all the guides I saw, the Ubuntu guy, the um, my uh, some other the Quick Cam forum, where there was just little bits and pieces posted here and there, just to see. Oh, can you see you have an audio device? It was always Dev Audio or Dev Audio Zero. I, I must have wasted two hours putting Dev Audio Zero in the in the empty box in DLC. Only to find out if I put H HW colon one comma zero in there, it would work. And then the only instructions or manual I saw it was some guy's blog. Now something changed. What what changed to cause Dev Audio Zero not to work? But you know what, what was it? Who made the decision? Why? But you know that cost me a couple hours, and didn't just cost me a couple hours. It cost some other guy a couple hours. Someone else a couple hours. I happen to like Linux. I want Linux to, to succeed. I'm willing to go through it, but the, the, maybe two or three or four or five guys aren't going to want to do that, and they're going to go around and say how crappy Linux is. So what good is it? I mean, couldn't some code be written somewhere in that VLC to get a dev audio zero to equal HW colon one comma zero? And translate that so whoever, if they put Dev Audio Zero in, it would you know the program would still be able to work. You know I don't want to make the guy that made whoever works with VLC. I don't want him to feel bad, but things like that happen all the time. You know if the distribution decides to throw Grub in there, they're just going to go with Grub, and that's the way it's going to be from now on. Well, if you can't boot into Mandrake and you got four kernels that you have, you have uh, bootload entries for uh, Ubuntu six times because you did the upgrade there and you haven't gone in and, and bothered to uninstall the old kernel so it wants to boot two to two different kernels that can't even boot and then you got another one it's on a black screen it's like crap you, you're used to having a colored screen on Grub1 and then the, the config files are just code you, you can't fit what are you going to do? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've gone down to Grub 1 on all my machines here. I'm not even messing with Grub 2. doesn't even recognize Haiku. I could, yeah, I could go to every desk and put a manual entry for... for and I'm going to have to deal with Grub 1 anyway. You know, not every desk, no. I'm not putting Haiku on every desk. But Grub... Grub... Uh, as a program behaves as if it knows everything, is going to get everything right. And expects a lot of the user to a lot out of the user to to bend it to the user's will when it doesn't get everything right. I've got I've been use, I had been using the SUSE distribution from seven three up to ten probably or a little maybe eleven one 
and slowly but surely now all the machines I try to install SUSE on won't even inst it won't even give me a graphical user interface for an install won't even do that so my new machine here can't install it and my old machines down here that I used to be able to install it on can't install it So I'm wondering why things used to work and they don't work anymore, or why 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 is it that we have to relearn things that we knew how to do to solve before? And I'm wondering what the impact is of these changes to the to the way thing. You know, why can't people that are making Grub give the user the option to turn these automatic things off and have their own? Grub config file that looks like the, what they're used to. What? Why not? Again, can't there be some kind of translation between the new and the old Grub? It seems like they're able to do that when they when the upgrade takes place, but they're not able to do that just in, pra in a practical sense. It doesn't make any sense. And what happens is that when people Hear guys like I, I. I keep bringing Eric Raymond up, but the reason why I do is because you know, yeah. You, know, you see this YouTube video of Eric Raymond sitting there saying that because I know when the the source code isn't open, bugs tend to live forever. I, I can think of so many other things where I went wrong, like. Um, there was something out of flux with Ubuntu, or something went wrong with uh, between Ubuntu and a the tool they're using to configure the network. And it was called GNOME, the, like a GNOME manager, a network GNOME, something like that. And so every time I set the IP to static IP number, because I don't like to run DHCP, not because I'm too stupid to use it, but because uh, I have reasons, <laughs> like um, I may have a script at another desk to to um, to VNC over to the IP number that I know this one is, right? Things like that. So, um, <laughs> I, 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 it just doesn't. Feel, okay, I'm gonna stop this one. I'm gonna make a second one, I guess.